Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's much appreciated. If you consider subscribing, if you haven't done already and pressing that like button, it'd be much appreciated. Help get the channel recognized a bit more in the YouTube algorithm. So you're probably watching this video because you have a car that has either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but it is wired. So every time you get into your car, you've got to plug your phone in and perhaps you can't be bothered. So you've decided I need to get some box of magic that is gonna make my Android Auto or my Apple CarPlay wireless. And that's what this does. So from the guys at One Car Stereo, they sent me this, it's their AI Box Lite. I'm gonna open it up, look inside, and then we're gonna check it out in my Polestar 2 and uh, basically see how well it works. Obviously, it works with any car that has wired uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Not, obviously, if you've already got wireless, you wouldn't be interested in this, but just to make that very clear, you have to already have a compatible stereo system that has wired AirPlay or uh, Android Auto. So let's unbox it, and then we'll take it out to the car and see if it works well or not. Oh, sounds so good. So this is it, the AI box light. So it is nine centimeters long, one centimeter thick, and five centimeters wide. In terms of powering it, so as I mentioned, you've got USB-C just at the end here. So that's the connection that plugs into your wired um, port on your vehicle. And then we have a USB-A slot at the end here. And that's so you can plug in a USB stick, some form of removable storage. Obviously, it doesn't require power. It's gonna get powered from this little device that's only five volts and one amp. But it means that you can play video and um, music from USB storage, as well as what you can connect to through your phone uh, and the internet with this device. So basically what's in here, it's a, a little single board computer, really. So it's got um, an eight core CPU with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage all on board in this thing. You can see here, there is vents on the underside and at both of the sides to make sure that obviously there is adequate cooling uh, whilst it's in your vehicle. And as I mentioned before, you do have to have a, a vehicle that has um, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay wired, or your head unit supports that. I'll put a link uh, down in the description just so you can verify if your vehicle um, has the relevant support if you're not too sure. So don't go buying this expecting it's going to give you Apple CarPlay if you don't have it already. So yeah, I think it looks uh, pretty cool. Obviously you can update it. It's running Android um, 10, I think. And uh, obviously there are updates available and you can also install other apps from the uh, Google Play Store, so Google browsers, other things that you might want to use. Now, me personally, in the Polestar 2, I'm really already very happy with the Google, Google Automotive um, operating system, but it is handy to have um, this option. So again, you can have um, Netflix, YouTube and stuff directly accessible from the apps. Um, with this and I might try it in my wife's Nissan Leaf as well in this video. So that's what we got 160 pounds I think is a reasonable price actually for some of these um, units We're going to see how fast it, it works because uh, obviously that's performance is going to be a key issue and uh, Yeah, so let's pop it out to the Polestar 2 and plug this thing in and see if it does what it's supposed to Okay, so here we are out in the Polestar 2 now, before I show you the AI box light, I just wanted to demonstrate what Apple CarPlay should look like, uh, if you're not familiar with it, but specifically with this vehicle. Now, the reason for that is that um, this box actually doesn't work so well with screens that are portrait like this. So I'm just gonna demonstrate it. Then we go over to the Nissan Leaf where this works really, really well. So definitely give some consideration to what orientation your screen is. Uh, and again, I'll give you an example um, so you can see where it's optimized or not. So uh, with most vehicles, if you've got a, a wired CarPlay or Android Auto, you've got a specific USB slot that you are pop the cable in. This is indicated on the Pulsar 2 by a kind of little white outlet. And if I plug my phone in, we should see that obviously CarPlay 
will show up. So I've got my phone. Okay, and so this is what Apple CarPlay should look like on, um, you know, the Polestar 2. So if I went into Audible, for example, a couple of things that I'm reading there at the moment, and then we can go back to the main screen and obviously then the slightly different version as well. So that's what CarPlay should look like. Now let's get this unplugged and we will plug in the AI box. Now, uh, as mentioned, the way this works is you pair it, you pair the box with your phone that's how the wireless piece works and there are a little uh, some leds you want me to see them right now um there is a blue led and that indicates that there's power the middle light is a green light and that's if there's an upgrade or anything available and then the red light is just a system light to show that the system is running so if you plug this in you can see the blue light has come on just there and when the red light starts flashing, we know that the, the box is pretty much booted up. We can just pop that out of the way uh, on the Pulsar 2. It sits quite nicely down in that little cubby hole. Now, what we'll see is obviously it's going to connect true to my phone with Bluetooth. So the first time you ever set this up on your phone, you need to go into your Bluetooth settings and you will see something like BT dash. And this one was EC70 and you connect that up and then basically ask you on your phone if you want to be able to use that device for CarPlay. So we are going to say yes, we want to use CarPlay and we can see here we've got AI box. So if we press CarPlay, okay, you can see it's loading up now the Android OS that's based on it and now you'll see the issue. So obviously because of the portrait, it's squished down into a landscape view just here. And because of that, obviously you get the squished up um, look of it which obviously isn't um, ideal. And then when you press the buttons, it's kind of a bit out of sync on where things are. So it doesn't really lend itself to working really very well at all on the uh, Polestar. So you have this little icon here, I'm not sure well you can see a little orange cube that you can drag around and that can give you access to the menu system. But again, Unfortunately, it really doesn't work very well with the Polestar 2. So if you're looking to get uh, this particular box of the Polestar 2, I wouldn't, again, because of the portrait layout. But let's pop into this Unleash, and it works absolutely amazing in that car. Okay, so now here we are in my wife's Nissan Leaf. So we'll just turn the Leaf on. And again, we're just going to plug this in to the USB socket down here. And now we get a much better idea of how well this box works if you know you have a car that has a nice landscape screen layout and just everything just works the touch sensitive works the streaming works everything so let me just kind of show you how that works as the box boots up here okay so ai box loaded loading up nicely we we'll then see it connect to the phone. So here we have it, looking just like Apple CarPlay should look and how you'd expect it to look. So nice, smooth movements. If you load up anything, it loads up and looks just how you'd expect it to. So much improved on a screen that is this orientation. As mentioned, you've got this little orange uh, box that you can move around. So you press and hold on that. You have an option to go back and exit out onto the device itself. So I'm not gonna go through the CarPlay features because you know if you, you can look to see what CarPlay or Android Auto is like. So back on the main screen of the device, we have obviously the option to go into Apple CarPlay we have the option for apps, we have the option for Netflix and an option for exiting. And just down here, we have uh, indication that Bluetooth is connected to our phone. Uh, there's no USB storage device plugged in. Obviously there is storage on the device as well that you could plug into your computer and see it as a mass storage device and connect things to. 
and then we are connected to the wireless network here at my house but also you can have this tethered to your hotspot on your device as well so if we just look into the apps we can see we have options for youtube video on the device or on a removable storage music on the device or removable storage and netflix as well so we just load up youtube Okay, and we'll do a search, Spectrum Geeks. And look at my one of the last videos here. Obviously the speed is limited because the Wi-Fi is not very really good uh, at the I front here. A city street pushing people out of the way. Oh, why am I dropping things adorably? But as you can see, the picture quality is great. The sound is really good through the system as well. Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in this video... So again, that is uh, YouTube. Again, we can load up Netflix. I'm not going to play any Netflix content because obviously I don't want this to get... Um, restricted but you can see straight away um that netflix loads up without a problem and we can access that then um we can play video which i will turn the volume down uh, for this so this is video uh, loaded from the device it's just a bit of fast and furious footage now so it's from running from the device it remembers where you last were as well that was really well and then obviously we have music uh, from here as well so i'll just turn it up briefly so you can hear it So again, all works really well from the device itself. So really impressed with the performance of it. It's very fast, very smooth, loads of content up really well and good quality integration into the car system as well. In terms of the settings, you um, can change what the navigation looks like. And it's not navigation in terms of maps, just how um, things are set up on that main home screen when we had uh, CarPlay, Netflix and what have you. So we want obviously Netflix to be the primary one. Change the language, so obviously depending on your language of choice, Many, many languages to choose from, but we'll stick it on English still. Look, see the version. So again, Android 10 um, and the Bluetooth version and what have you. So nothing too interesting for us there. More settings. This is where we can configure um, the connection to the wireless network or the hotspots uh, on your phone as well. Check out um, how we set up uh, the different apps that are on here. Sound, etc. So we'll just go in here. Just gives you some information about the apps and stuff that are pre-installed. But again, you've got Google Play Store, so you can do whatever you want. And in terms of the storage, um, we've obviously used 50% of it based on content that's on here and the operating system itself. So basically standard of what you'd see on a typical Android um, device. We're going to system settings. As you can see here, we can drive the vehicle and still have the content playing. So I will show you that in a moment. Obviously, you shouldn't do that because you may be distracted uh, whilst driving so you can turn that feature on and off but again some people have asked about that if it was an option and the answer is that it is so yeah i think it works pretty well so again let's just load up youtube again i'll pop the car into reverse and move back a little bit and then we'll go forwards again hopefully the camera's not jerking all over the place but if we get into drive so if we play the content we're going to sit down and have a little look at the new as the vehicle's driving forwards the video still continues to work flux so thanks for tuning in to this video and again apologies for a little bit of the mess so i think as you can tell it works pretty well if you have a screen orientation that works the way that you want it to so i would definitely consider one of these if you're looking for something um you know that's going to give you wireless android auto or apple carplay into a car that has support for for carplay and android auto but only for wired and this little box that just tucks out the way is absolutely brilliant i think it's um definitely something um you know to consider using so yeah let's wrap up the video so that's it the um one car stereo AI box light. I think that it works really, really well. 
as long as you do have a landscape screen layout. So no good for me and my Polestar 2, but that actually screen is quite unique to things like Polestar and Tesla. So if you're a BMW, Volvo, Nissan, then and you're looking to get wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in your car, then definitely check this out. I think it is going to be really worth it. Let me know in the comments what you think if you've got one. I've not had a chance to try other devices like this to see if this is unique in terms of the screen orientation and another one might work better in the Polestar 2 or what I don't know. But um, yeah, very impressed with how this works. Again, if you're interested in getting one, there's a link down in the description. Please like this video if you have done. Consider subscribing if you haven't done already. Until the next video, take care of yourself. Goodbye for now.